Since everything was already connected from a previous recording, mostly for my students, I also wanted to quickly investigate something on the AVR Mac controllers, which I have been interested in for quite a while. And this is what is actually the latency of an interrupt service routine. In other words, how long does it take the AVR microcontroller to enter the interrupt service routine after the interrupt event has occurred? And uh, for this, I have the following setup here. We have an AVR micro microcontroller down here. It's an 80 Mega 328. And uh, it is connected up so that we have a PWM signal generated on or from timer one in 8-bit mode. So the 16-bit timer is running in 8-bit mode. And uh, well, the, the value for the output compare register is adjustable by potentiometer connected to the analog to digital converter, but that really doesn't matter. But then I have an interrupt service routine written for the overflow interrupt in timer one, which actually will briefly toggle the pin PC2. So the second or yeah, third pin, 0, 1, 2 on port C of the AVR microcontroller. So if we have a brief look at the code, the microcontroller itself is running at its internal one megahertz clock frequency. And here is the timer overflow interrupt vector routine, which I'm talking about. We are setting the pin two, PVC two, um, to a one and then immediately afterwards back to a zero. So it's also interesting to see how long these two instructions take. And in our init function, I'm setting this pin as an output. And here we have the initialization of timer one, which is running at an PWM mode on channel A. Channel B is disconnected and it's running in fast PWM mode number one, which means it's running at, so we have 0101 zero, one here, it's running at full speed, no prescaler at one megahertz, counting from zero to 255 in 8-bit mode. And I'm enabling the output, uh, not the output, the overflow interrupt for this timer as well. And well, here nothing much happens either. So what we can see on the oscilloscope now is that our PWM pulses start over here. And this means that at this point here, when the PWM point starts, our timer starts counting from zero to 255. But this is at the same time the exact time of the overflow interrupt because here our timer has just previously overflown from 255 and is restarting counting at zero. What we see down here on the blue channel is the state of PC2. So these are our output signals generated in the interrupt service routine. And if I extend the time base here, we can see now at five microseconds per centimeter here, our timer starts counting and here our interrupt service routine is active and we are actually changing the state of PC2. Sometimes it's obviously exactly one clock cycle earlier or later um, because we are at five microseconds per centimeter. Each centimeter on the screen here is five instruction cycles or five clock cycles on the CPU. So this means we have 5, 10, 15, in average 20 microseconds or 20 clock cycles, which it takes before we are inside the interrupt service routine. It jitters by plus minus one here, and uh, that seems to be quite stable. So it's, it's never too off, it seems. So it's actually okay. And what we can also see is that sometimes the interrupt service routine starts even later. And this must be the cases when we are actually stuck in the other interrupt service routine 
on timer zero, which is this routine here, which actually updates the LED display on the microcontroller, which is also done in an interrupt service routine.